Welcome to online worship at First Presbyterian Church of Bryan, Ohio for May 24th, 2020. Thanks for looking in. Today is graduation Sunday, and even though we can't be face-to-face -to, -face to uh, celebrate with our graduates today, we're thankful for our graduates. So I just want to go through right now and list our graduates, and then later in the service I'll say a prayer for them. But uh, graduates we're celebrating today are Hannah Goodrich, daughter of Tom Goodrich and Holly Snyder. Their grandmother is Sharon Patton, and uh, she graduated from Bryan High School. Then Sean Bupre, son of Lori Shad and stepson of Chris Shad, a graduate of Fort County. Caleb Flynn, um, graduate of Bryan High School. He's a member of our youth group. Bryant Horn, a graduate of Fort County, a member of our youth group, and parents are Rebecca Underwood and stepdad, um, Brad Underwood. Casey Morey also attends our youth group, and she comes from Liberty Center High School, and that's where she graduated from. Catherine Grace Benedict is the niece of Laura Manon. Um, she received a Bachelor of Arts at the University of Kentucky. And then Steve Manon is also a nephew of uh, Laura Manon, and he's a graduate of Yo Senior High School in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. And so we'll be praying for each of them later in the service, and we celebrate them. And this time, it's been an unusual year for our seniors. And we just pray that uh, things get better for them as they move into their lives and into their future. A few other announcements. Tuesday free meal this past Tuesday served 109 people. Uh, we had enough food for 109. We fed all 109 and covered everybody but didn't have any food left. So that was good news. So if you know of anybody that is hungry, that's in need, that's struggling, that's unemployed, um, not back to work, those kinds of things, send them to us, but have them to be in line at 5.30 uh, because the food's usually gone by quarter to six. Also, next Monday is Memorial Day, and there's no um, online Bible study next Monday. Uh, we'll resume that June 1st, but our devos for Tuesdays and Thursdays will continue next week. Next Sunday, May 31st, is Pentecost. Um, so I'm encouraging you, uh, we're going to be online for that Sunday, but I still want you to wear red at home. Red's the symbol of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God. And so um, I just encourage you to wear red as a reminder of our Pentecost celebration. And then just some information about reopening worship to face-to-face -face worship is the session decided to postpone that. Um, they're going to read this re-look at that, look at that um, again on June 15th, and hopefully soon thereafter we'll be able to come to some agreement on um, opening worship again after that point. So for the next month, we're going to still do worship online. So just wanted to let you know that that was the decision of the session. At some point or another, in the course of our life, each of us must determine what is the goal of our life? What do we exist for? What's our purpose? What is our life's focus and priority? Whom or what will we serve? There's a wide variety of possible life goals and priorities to choose from in this world. And the goals of some people are to get rich, to experience as much pleasure as possible, to live the easy life, to have power and control over others, to be popular, to be an accepted and desired part of the social set, or even to serve God and do his will. Our passage from Matthew 6 tells us to concentrate and focus our lives on things that are going to last. That's what the passage talks about. Jesus said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's Matthew six nineteen to 21. So the thought occurred to me is what kinds of things can moths destroy and rust consume and thieves steal? For those are the treasures, according to Scripture, that do not last. 
Obviously, I think Jesus is referring to the material possessions, to money, to the pursuit of pleasure for its own sake. He's referring to a lifestyle that is self-oriented, that's money-oriented, possession-oriented. And Jesus is saying, well, all these things are nice. Don't put your trust and your security and your future in these things, for they're transitory. They're momentary. They're short-term sources of happiness and joy and fulfillment. They don't last, and they can be taken away. And if they're lost and taken or broken, and your life is bound up in them, then you too are lost and broken when they disappear from your life. You know, I think a lot of people in these days of the coronavirus have discovered this truth, the truth of these words in this time of isolation and physical distancing and illness and loss. Our lives have quickly become very, very different. They've been, in some ways, unrecognizable. And I think, and I hope, my prayer is, is that we're really learning what's really important in life and what isn't quite so important in life and being able to determine the difference. And that's what this passage of Scripture is about. Jesus is telling us to focus our life and our goals and our priorities and our energies on things that are going to last, that cannot be taken from you, that cannot be broken, that cannot be changed and swept away by a pandemic like the coronavirus. In other words, he's telling us to focus on things like kindness, personal integrity and honesty, strong personal character, love, salvation through the only Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Service to the living God, the creator of the universe. Jesus is saying, learn the lesson that people are more important than things. Learn the lesson to live beyond yourself. Learn the lesson, don't be selfish. Learn the lesson to invest your life in God and his work and invest in others. Doing ministry, even in these unusual times. And life will be good. Friends, if we're striving to get rich, to have a large home, two cars, a boat, a second home, to be popular and accepted, to have power and control over others, I got to tell you, that's living a pretty superficial existence, centered in things that really aren't all that important, at least from an eternal perspective. And I hope in these recent days that we have discovered that these things are indeed pretty shallow, that they're not really all that important in the big scheme of things. My prayer is is that we're learning some lessons in this time of the virus, this time of being um, separated and and, and, um, centering and sheltering at home and those kinds of things, is that God wants us to use that time to grow and to stretch and to learn some new things. In a passage from Joshua 24, we're asked to decide whom we will serve in this life. Who are we going to serve in this life? Who or whom will be our focus, our center, our reason for being? So let me read that passage of Scripture. It's a little long, but hang in there with me because it's a good passage of Scripture. Joshua 24, 14 to 27. Now fear the Lord and serve him with faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua then said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. 
If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster upon you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. And then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. See, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us, and it will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. So in this passage of Scripture, Joshua is encouraging the people to take seriously this vow and this promise, because there's consequences that come as a result of not keeping it. He encourages the people to choose and to think through who they're really going to serve in their life. And as I think about the application of that passage to us and to our time, when I think about it, I think we really have two choices in whom we're going to serve. And I think the two choices are pretty clear. God or ourselves. The issue is, who comes first? Who will have priority? Who will be the focus? It's one of the most important questions you will ever answer in your life. Whom will you serve? God or self? Jesus put the question this way. No one can serve two masters, for he, he will either hate the one or love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That's from Matthew six twenty four. Another version of that passage uses in place of money, uses mammon, M-A-M-M-O-N. You can't serve God in mammon. Now, mammon is best described as the pursuit of pleasure and material gain, wealth, possessions, and a lifestyle that goes with it. The pursuit of mammon, the pursuit of money, as primary goals in life, is essentially the goal of putting yourself first of meeting our needs and our wants and our desires before anything and everyone else. And the reason we can't serve both God and mammon or God and money at the same time is that the demands of God and the demands of mammon or money contradict. And they take us in opposite directions. We have to choose which one we will make the focus and goal and priority in our life as Joshua challenged the the Israelite people so long ago. And we still have to be making that same choice today. We still must choose whom we will serve, God or ourselves, and whom we choose to serve will determine everything else in our lives. I also need to tell you, not to choose is to choose. You can't just not choose because you're choosing then yourself. You're not choosing God, so your only other option is to choose yourself. So if you're not thinking you're choosing, you really are making a choice, and it's not for God. As Christians, we have a belief that all things ultimately have their source in God. All that we have and all that we are and all the talents that we possess come to us from God. William Barclay puts it this way, The ultimate ownership of all things belongs to God. There is nothing in this world of which a man can say, this is mine. Of all things, he can only say, this belongs to God and God has given me the use of it. Therefore, a basic principle of life emerges. There is nothing in this world of which any person can say, this is mine and I will therefore do what I like with it. Of everything, we must say, this is God's. And we must use it as its owner would have it used. In other words, what does God want us to do with it? What does God want us to do with our lives? What does God want us to do with our stuff? 
What does God want us to do with our family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Our lives are God's, and we need to be seeking out God's will for our lives, even in these days that are uncertain, where we don't know what's going to be happening in the next week or month or year. William Barclay again writes, the, perp- excuse me, the possession of wealth and money and material things is not a sin, but it's a grave responsibility. If a person owns many material things, it is not so much a matter of congratulations as it is a matter of prayer that he or she may use them as God would have him to. You know, during these last few months of change and isolation and illness during the coronavirus, question, how have you used what you have to help others and continue the work of the kingdom. In, the, in this pandemic period, how have you used what you have to help somebody else and to continue the work of the kingdom? Ministry does not end in a pandemic, and actually it probably should increase. You see, this is the difference. A person who serves God and whose priority in life is to do God's will is going to seek to use God's gifts and God's blessings to please God and not just him or herself. We seek to do ministry in the Lord's name in whatever place or time we find ourselves. And in contrast, a person who puts self first and seeks to meet their own needs first are going to use God's gifts and blessings only for their own enjoyment, their own benefit, and their own furtherance person who serves God will seek out God's will for their life and how he wants them to use what they have so that God will be glorified, so God's work is furthered in the world. Real joy that lasts forever and, and, and is bigger than the issues and circumstances of life comes from serving God, not really from serving oneself. It's other oriented. It's God oriented. Real fulfillment comes from being a part of God's eternal plan for the world, not from only fulfilling our own plans for our own world. Happiness does not come from things we own, how much money we have, who we control, or how popular we are. Rather, true joy and true fulfillment and peace and contentment and real happiness come from serving God and living his way, doing his work, And that leads to life eternal, which begins now. So if we choose to serve God and live by his way and his standards as best we can, nobody does it perfectly, but as best we can, the rewards are not just in the next life. There are rewards in this life right now, today, this minute. For God promises to meet our needs, to deepen us, to make us wise, to walk with us through all things, to bring us joy that transcends our personal individual circumstances, that gives us a sense of peace and satisfaction in doing the right thing. God promises to be our security and our bedrock of strength, to give us a purpose and, and a reason for being that makes a difference and contributes to the greater good, especially in times like these. If we choose to serve ourselves first, we're going to be dependent on our own resources, our own power, our own strength, and I frankly think such a foundation is bound to fail at some point in our life journey. Yet if we choose the Lord, I believe we're never going to be alone. There will always be help and wisdom and guidance and love and grace and forgiveness And again, love available to help us along the way. And such a foundation will never fail. And it will always strengthen us and provide security in difficult and challenging times. I'm a believer that the good that we do in times like these, or frankly in any time, will come back to us in positive ways over and over and over. That's part of God's blessing to us. You know, we talk a lot about um, receiving things from God if we do good. It isn't always stuff. It isn't money. It isn't things. It's often just that sense that good returns to us um, because God sends it in form of blessing back at us. 
So let me put before you the challenge Joshua put before the people of Israel so long ago. Because that challenge still has to be answered by each and every one of us in the course of our lives. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods which your fathers served beyond the river and serve the Lord. And if you be unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a question and a challenge that each of us have to answer is who are we going to serve, God or or myself? Who will you serve? What's the goal and focus and priority of your life? Who comes first? God or yourself? Choose this day whom you will serve. And focus your life accordingly. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today we want to honor our graduates. So we're going to take a little special time. Uh, We'll start our prayer time for them and then we'll just move into a generalized prayer time. But uh, let's start out our prayer time today by praying for our graduates. Mighty God, we thank you for Hannah Goodrich and Sean Bupre, Caleb Flynn, Bryant Horn, Casey Morey, Catherine Grace Benedict, and Stephen Mannon. Gracious God, I just thank you for each one. I thank you for blessing them, for um, just working in their lives, in their hearts, Uh, We've had contact with them through this church in some way, shape, or form, whether it's through family members here or whether it's through youth group, um, growing up here, lots of different ways that you have impacted these young people's lives. And Lord, we're thankful for that opportunity to do that impact work in their lives. We thank you that you give us the opportunity to influence others. And Lord, I pray that that influence continues as they move from high school and and, um, Catherine from college that you will continue to walk with them and guide them and lead them and love them. You'll protect them. That you'll help them figure out next steps in life, where you want them to go, how you want them to serve you, and how you want them to live their lives. So, Lord, bless each one. Draw them close to yourself. Put a hedge of protection around them. And, Lord, be real to them like never before. Lord, also we ask today that you help us stay focused on the things that matter, things that will last, priorities that honor you and build up others and ourselves. Lord, keep us from getting derailed by things that only bring momentary pleasure and happiness. Instead, instead help us to seek after joy that lasts, that has eternal value. Lord God, help us to serve you even over choosing to serve ourselves. Use this time to teach us what's important and what is not, and then have us to adjust our lives accordingly, to learn the lesson of these days. And as we reapproach life again, and as we get busy again, some go back to work, things reopen, help us to carefully choose what part of normal we go back to and what part we leave behind. Lord, we pray for those who are on our congregational prayer list today. We think about Jean and Laura Andrews, Tom and Susan Herman, Sharon Patton, Jason and Elliot Rosendahl, Ken and Yvette Zedeker. Lord, bless them and keep them, and Lord, I'm thankful for each one of them, that you gave them breath, that you have created them, that you put them in my life and the life of this church and this community. Be at work in their lives. Draw them close to yourself. Help them to grow where they need to grow and stretch where they need to stretch. But Lord, also make them useful. Help them to realize that they're here for a purpose, to be about your business, and help them to be about your business wherever they go, wherever they find themselves. So Lord, bless and keep and guide them. We pray for Mary Lou Nichols today, who has had surgery this past week on Wednesday. 
Um, we pray for health for her and things to improve for her. Lord, we continue to pray for those on the front lines of the coronavirus. We pray special protections on health care workers, those who clean, grocery store and retail store workers, restaurant workers who are now getting back into face-to-face um, contact, those in factories, meatpacking plants, wherever they may be challenged. Lord, I pray for other pastors who are trying to meet spiritual needs of everyone around them, for churches who are still doing ministry and learning new ways to provide worship and Bible studies and the like. Lord, for anyone in harm's way, be with them and keep them safe. Thank you, Lord, for working in this pandemic. Keep using us to be about your work and the business of the kingdom and help us to choose you and to make you our first priority. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you would like to supplement um, your worship with some music today, in addition to what we're providing today, I recommend you go to YouTube, but there's lots of other places to get it. Some hymns you might listen to are Christ is Made the Sure Foundation, Living for Jesus, An Old One Who Was on the Lord's Side Who Will Serve the King, Some praise songs that um, are appropriate for today as well. One is called Nobody by Casting Crowns and Matthew West. Speak Life by Toby Mac. Dream Small by Josh Wilson. So, friends, keep the faith. Be blessed and be a blessing in Jesus' name to someone else this week. Know that you're missed. Know that you're loved. I hope one day soon we can get together face-to-face and worship again. So hang in there. If you need us at church, give us a call. In Jesus' name, amen.